Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm the king and welcome back to the channel. Today, we have a developer update for September of 2020, essentially the PTB that's going to be coming out. I did read through this. There was a lot of cool changes incorporated in this and uh, I'm very excited to talk about it. Two quick things before we jump on into this. Number one, we're going to be uploading every single day and streaming every single day starting on Sunday. So make sure you guys are subscribed and you guys can help us in our race with polyester to 100,000 subscribers. We're so, so, so close. So consider subscribing down below because over 60% of you guys are not subbed to the channel. And make sure you check out our Twitch as well because we will be posting there. And the final message is if you guys are interested, come on into the Discord to stay updated with everything. Let's go ahead and read this developer update for September of 2020 posted by Peanuts. I played with him yesterday, actually. Welcome to the September developer update, a series of blog posts where we discuss upcoming changes and features making their way into Dead by Daylight. Chapter 16 Review With the upcoming mid-chapter patch, we're kicking off a new initiative to review the previous release chapter, The Killer, The Perks, and The Survivor Perks, and make changes that are needed. The first to receive this treatment is the Silent Hill chapter. We feel that it's important to see how the new content plays out in a real scenario before committing to balance changes. Something that seems overpowered upon release can end up being a non-issue once people have had a chance to play against it and develop counterplay. Likewise, something that might seem underpowered might find a niche once people have had the time to experiment with new builds and playstyles. Other times, the playstyles that crop up over time can turn into be a frustrating or unfun to play against. With this in mind, we plan to review the previous chapter once it had a few months to simmer and address any kinds of issues or imbalances that may be apparent. This period gives us a chance to monitor how the new content is used and get a better understanding of how it is used and how it can be abused before tweaking things. So essentially what they're saying here is that every time we receive a new chapter, the next mid-chapter patch is going to address changes to that specific uh, chapter. So the next mid-chapter patch that we're going to be getting in about three months from now, we can expect blight changes. And of course, if there's any quality of life updates that they need to do, any other changes to any of the characters, they will also go ahead and change that. So pretty exciting stuff. So. We obviously have the executioner changes, as I talked about, they are going to make changes to the previous DLC, so let's read about them. From watching Pyramid Head matches over the past few months, we have noticed that many people will opt to only use the punishment of the damn attack at pallets and windows. This is true. Where the survivor is locked into the interaction and unable to attempt to dodge the attack. To address this and make gameplay more dynamic, we're making two changes. Number one. Increasing the delay after cancelling Rites of Judgment before Pyramid can attack. The reason for the change is to add a downside to cancelling your power at each pallet or window. Currently, the survivor is left with two choices. Vault the window slash trap the pallet and get hit with the punishment of the damned, or continue running and get hit with a basic attack. By increasing the delay before you can do the basic attack after cancelling Rites of Judgment, the survivor gets a small window to avoid the attack similar to Huntress or Demogorgon. So long story short, when your sword is in the ground and you're getting ready to lift it up, if you decide not to lift it up and you just cancel it so you can go and swipe, instead of having that instant where you can just pick it up and swipe really quickly, that time frame is going to be extended to be longer. So now it will take longer to pull your sword out the ground and then get that hit, giving survivors counterplay. Now this is more for balance changes, this isn't a necessary nerf, this is supposed to be a buff if you read the second part of this and if it is used correctly and the way it is intended. So let's read the second part. Decreasing the delay after attacking with Punishment of the Dam. Missing attack with Punishment of the Dam can feel very punishing. Oh, the irony. The cooldown after attacking is fairly long, which gives the survivor a lot of time to gain distance. By lowering the cooldown, you'll be able to use the power more liberally without having it backfire as hard as you miss. So, essentially, you can plant your sword in the ground, use your power if you miss, so be it, continue to use it. The goal of these changes is to move Pyramid's Head gameplay in a more skill-based direction, which rewards aiming your attacks well rather than canceling your power and only using it in situations where it will guarantee you a hit. We are not aiming to make the executioner stronger or weaker overall, but rather to address some of the frustrations of both sides. 
So what they're basically doing is pushing that skill bar higher and saying you basically got to get good. You can't rely on just mind gaming and waiting for perfect safe hits. Instead, you actually have to go ahead and use your power more effectively, use it more efficiently. And if you don't do that, you will be punished. But if you do it, however, you will be rewarded. So that are those are the changes for Pyramid Head. Happy to see these changes. When we make our tier list, we'll probably do it before the end of this month. We'll incorporate those changes with Pyramid Head and we will rank everything in that tier list. That video is coming up, so stay tuned. Perk changes. We're happy to see that some of the perks from Chapter 16 have found their way into people's regular lineup and niche builds. However, there are three perks that we would like to revisit. These perks are Trail of Torment. We are on the side of caution when releasing this perk. If the killer is undetectable too often, it can easily become overwhelming and start to overshadow actual stealth-based killers. After watching it play out, we are comfortable with giving Trail of Torment a buff. The undetectable status effect will now remain active until the mark generator stops regressing or until survivor is put into the dying state by any means. This creates an interesting dynamic where the survivors need to stop the generator from regressing to move the undetectable status effect. The killer can use the, this to ambush survivors or use it to sneak up on a survivor from an unexpected angle. So now, when you kick that gen and we were always like, why is that generator highlighted? It makes no sense. Now it actually makes more sense. You have to go and touch that generator. And if you don't touch that generator, the killer will remain in the undetectable stats effect, continuing to let their power grow. Now, obviously, there's counterplay to this. And if you don't do it or if you're all the way across the map, then the killer will have the upper hand and sneak up on people. I can see a lot of people using this in their really good stealth builds. Force Penance is next on the list. Force Penance have some interesting applications, but the duration seems to be a little low to get much use out of the broken effect. We're increasing the duration of the broken effect by 20 seconds across all tears. That's awesome. And finally, we have Blood Pack. Blood Pack's haste effect is nice to have, but did not last long enough to see much use. We're scrapping the duration of the haste effect and instead making it indefinitely until two survivors are no longer within 16 meters of one another. Now, I hope that people don't really abuse this perk, because let's say you are playing survivor. Now, I can see this being really, really, really abused. I can see the builds that are going to be coming out, which is like infinite speed, because remember, the way Blood Pact worked was if you healed a survivor, right? And you guys, I, if you healed the obsession, I believe, if you're the obsession and you healed someone, I, I don't remember exactly the implications with it. What ends up happening is that you both gain a haste status effect for 7, 9, and 10 seconds? Or 7, 8, 10 seconds. I don't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head. But that doesn't matter because they're making it indefinitely until two survivors are no longer within 60 meters of each other. So if you're in a swift and you guys are playing together and you stick next to each other and your friend goes to loop, the killer is going to have an incredibly difficult time catching you if you're getting a 10% boost in speed. That's insane. That's like basically having hope at the end of the game amplified. And especially with someone in a swift, if you guys are good in swift as well, this perk is going to be meta. I'm telling you from now, if they keep it this way, it is going to be so, so strong. I'm all for balance, but this just seems crazy. Alrighty. Now we have miscellaneous perk changes. The first one is any means necessary. Reduce the cooldown to 60 seconds and added the scoring event for resetting a pallet. This is another perk that aired on the side of caution when releasing. Resetting pallets can be a game changer and we wanted to make sure that it would not get out of hand. Upon review, we are comfortable with decreasing the cooldown to 60 seconds. So now, every 60 seconds, you can reset a pallet. That's pretty good. Next is Cruel Limits. Increase radius to 32 meters. There were concerns with Cruel Limits being overbearing when the perk first launched, but it turned out to be a non-issue. We are increasing the range from 32 to 32 meters from 24. So that's going to be really, really beneficial for using any type of perk builds that you can come up with, especially on the higher mobility killers. For the people added a scoring event so that that's pretty much it just adding a scoring event for using for the people nothing else to it i guess that's a change mindbreaker increased the duration of the exhausted status effect 
Still don't know if that will do much for the perk. And they said the exhausted status effect from Mindbreaker often ended up being too short to make use of it. We are increasing the duration by a few seconds across the board. Maybe the perk isn't that bad, and maybe we actually need to see it with increased duration, and we could see something good. Uh, next on the list is Slippery Meat. Remove Bear Trap Escape Chance added an increased chance to self unhook. Slippery Meat has found its way into some niche builds, but is one of the few perks from back in the day that affects one killer more than others, increasing your odds to increase uh, escaping the bear trap. This is something we've moved away from recently, so we'll be removing the increased bear trap escape chance from this perk. To better play into a niche playstyle, Slippery Meat will now increase your chance to self unhook in addition to giving you more self unhook attempts. And I always thought that this perk did this. I, I never use it too much, so I never really paid attention, but I thought that's what this always did. Unless they changed it. I don't remember, <laughs> to be honest. Next is Phenantophobia. A, a pretty strong perk that a lot of people use. You see this more in Legion Plague and killers like that. Let's read what they did. Removed heal speed penalty. Increased penalty on other actions. Ooh, that's a crazy change. Phenantophobia is meant to encourage the survivors to heal in order to avoid a penalty from the perk. However, it currently reduces healing speed as well, creating a lose-lose situation no matter what the survivors do. This prevents from the perk from making the perk stronger as it would quickly get overbearing. To address this, we're removing the reduced healing speed from the perk, but increasing the action speed penalty to compensate. So essentially, this is how the perk was meant to be used. So rather than running Sloppy Butcher and, and uh, Thanatophobia with like a Swing Chain Freddy and having a Forever Freddy build, or just piling on Sloppy with Than, you can now heal at a normal rate, but if you refuse to heal and you do anything else, there will be a harsher penalty. I like this change. I personally think this will be more balanced for both sides, and it will give the killers pressure on something else than generators. So instead of the survivors like, screw it, let's just go through the Nanthophobia and not heal, like let's say you're playing Legion, now they're forced to heal because the penalty will be harsher. We're going to live forever. Added new ways to get tokens. At an increased healing speed when the survivor is in the dying state. That's pretty cool. We're going to live forever is often seen as the survivor equivalent to barbecue and chili, but lacking a secondary like the ladder's aura revealing. It can also cause survivors to compete for unhooks, leading to people rushing in for hook saves before it's safe. By adding additional ways to get tokens, we hope to reduce the competition between these survivors. The secondary effect will also make the perk more used in the trial. That's pretty good. If you're in the dying state, you can instantly get people up. If you're running a healing build, this is pretty good, and you'll be getting some extra points. Technician is next on the list. Increase the chance to prevent an explosion to 100%. Add in an increased penalty to missed skill checks. Technician is designed as a perk to help newer players and those who struggle with skill checks. This is, however, a random aspect to it as to whether or not the generator explosion will be prevented. To make it more consistent and play more into the learning tool aspect, we are changing the perk to always prevent the explosion, but adding a small penalty to progress for missed skill checks. Fair enough. And here is one of the big ones. Pop Goes the Weasel has been changed. Decrease the time the perk stays activated for 45 seconds. I got no issue with this. Originally, Pop Goes the Weasel had a 30 second cooldown, which felt too short to get most use out of it. We later increased this to 60 seconds. This felt much better to use, but it wound up being a little too lenient and allowed killers to find and kick a generator at their leisure, often after chasing and downing a different survivor. To add some urgency back to the perk, we are splitting the difference and changing the time to 45 seconds at tier 3. This way, you'll have enough time to get a generator you want to kick, but you want to kick the generator before committing to a chase with another survivor. This is fine. Oftentimes when I'm killing people, I find that I still have a little bit of Pop Goes the Weasel. I can go and kick the gen and then come back, hook the survivor and do everything. I used to run this on 30 seconds on all of my 110 movement speed killer. I have no issues with it. Only if a gen is across the map and you want to get it, you won't be able to get it, but more fair on both sides. And now we have perk rarity simplification. Keeping with the theme of perks, a small change, but a noteworthy one nonetheless. All perks will now share the same rarities based on their tears. Currently, tier 3 perks can either be rare or very rare. This can make it difficult to find a perk you're looking for, since the perk list is sorted not just alphabetically, but divided across two rarities. Going up, 
perk rarity in the matches are different and it's just uncommon, rare, very rare. I wish they would just make a search bar so you could find your perk or do it like DBD Mobile where they split the perks into different tiers based on what kind of perks they are. They said this makes it easier to find a perk you're looking for in your perk list and it also makes it easier to tell what tier perk is at glance. I mean, this is going to be better because if you remember the way I do it on stream is alphabetically. So if someone is like run a nurse's calling, I know that's the first perk on the list. If someone's like barbecue and chili, I know it's on the first page. So this is definitely going to help. And finally, the final piece of information that we have is the graphics update to the Mac Millen Estate. Last but not least, we recently showed off some concept art for the next realm and receive a graphics update. Here they are once more in case you missed them. There we go. We obviously covered this in a video, so if you guys want to take a look on this, you can. And finally, said this concludes the September edition of the developer update. All of the changes mentioned above will be available for testing in the PTB on Steam starting Tuesday, September 29th. We look forward to seeing what you think once we've had the chance to try everything out the Dead by Daylight theme. And there you go, that is the developer update. We have quite a lot to digest, executioner changes, perk changes, new map coming, all of that will be featured coming up pretty soon on our videos and you guys can get your hands on this on the 29th if you are on Steam, so make sure you guys are tuning into that. We'll be doing it on stream, we'll be posting videos, testing out Pyramid Head, testing out those perks, exploring the new map, you'll see all those videos coming up. Thank you everyone for watching. Remember guys, if you are interested, join the Discord to stay up to date with our basically 90 days of upload and 90 days of stream. I, I will take breaks here and there. I saw a lot of people being concerned of me like burning out or anything like that. Right now guys, my motivation is at its peak and uh, it's, it's especially good to upload in Quadrant 4 with October, November, December. So I'll be pumping out videos for you guys. And the second videos that you're going to be seeing, I said I'm going to be uploading every single day, are going to mainly be stream highlights that we do on stream. So essentially it's pretty much the same amount of effort. So you guys will be seeing a lot more DVD content from me and I hope you guys will really enjoy it. In addition to that, I'm also going to edit my videos a lot more starting pretty soon uh, and, and just make it more appealing to you guys really trying to put my best foot forward with YouTube and then on Twitch we're going to have a accurate streaming schedule we're going to obviously on October 4th or 5th depending I haven't decided yet we're going to do our birthday subathon or bitathon sorry opening up some gifts having some fun doing our thing so make sure you guys are following on Twitch make sure you guys are subscribed on YouTube leave a like if you enjoyed the video join the discord link is in the description if you want to stay up to date with everything come and say hello on the server it's very friendly and it's not too crazy in there like some other servers so you can definitely say anything if you need to with that being said i'm the king everyone i hope you guys did enjoy as always i did my crown to you guys and we'll see you in the fall